Okay, this would be a recording of unit, um, I think on 120, I think you're going to find this uh, Zoom session to be uploaded onto unit 5. Because I think in the coursework, as Becca has it set up, unit 4 was the midterm. I think right. that's how she's got this set up. So You're I right. believe to find this, you'd look into, into unit five. So unit five is called the inner ear. And we will spend two weeks on the anatomy of the inner ear, followed by another two weeks on the physiology of the inner ear. So the inner ear is the cochlea. It is the center of the hearing universe. Without it, we have no hearing. The outer and middle ears simply conduct sound to where it's got to go. And we said last week or the week before, the middle ear transduces or changes sound into mechanical energy. Well, the cochlea takes that mechanical energy from the middle ear and it transduces that or changes it into hydraulic, wave-like energy. Fluid, fluid waves. And those fluid waves receive a further transduction. The hair cells inside the cochlea transduce that fluid movement into electrical energy. So there's two transductions that take place in the inner ear. Let's go and take a peek at our notes here and our PowerPoint and see what we've got here. Looking at the notes, inner ear anatomy, bony and membranous labyrinths. First, I'll read it to you, then I'll show it to you on the PowerPoint. They both, the vestibular system is balance, and the cochlea is hearing. They are located in the petrous portion of the temporal bone. Recall that the temporal bone has the soft mastoid portion that surrounds the outer ear and part of the middle ear space. The petrous portion surrounds part of the middle ear space and the cochlea. Now, they both, vestibular system and cochlea, both have inside membranous labyrinths and bony labyrinths. That's one, and I'll show you pictures of this. Both share the same fluids. In the bony labyrinth is a fluid called perilymph, which is similar to cerebral spinal fluid, the fluid that surrounds your spinal cord and brain. Endolymph, always endo, always means inside. Peri, like perimeter, means outside. Okay, so endolymph is opposite fluid, and it's contained in the membranous labyrinths. Yeah, so bony labyrinths contain perilymph, membranous labyrinths contain endolymph, and these fluids are shared between both the vestibular system and the cochlea. Another Per, what do you call it, per, thing to read out right away is both the balance vestibular system and the cochlea have hair cells. And they not only have hair cells, but they have two types of hair cells. So we've got three things here. They are located in the, they have membranous and, and bony labyrinths. They share the same fluids and they both have hair cells. And they have two types of hair cells, both of them do. The balance systems, they call them type 1 and type 2, afferent and efferent. The cochlea, it's called inner and outer hair cells. Okay, enough words. Let's look at some pictures. When you're looking at the cochlea and vestibular system, you can draw a line right through it right here. So the vestibular system is shown in pink and the cochlea is shown in orange. Now, the, when you look at this slide, think of the white on this slide as solid bone, okay? It's solid bone, petrous portion of the temporal bone. Uh, what's done here is holes or labyrinths, tunnels have been dug into the bone. So it's not so much of a presence as it is an absence. If you think of the white as solid bone, then you've got these weird curved tunnels carved into the bone. And that's done in a snail shape here and in kind of these cauliflower shaped things here. Now this is a person's right cochlea. The point of the cochlea aims against the back of the eye. Okay, and the balance system is actually a little bit more lateral or toward the side. The cochlea is a little bit more medial than the balance system is. 
So now when you're looking at this whole system here, we'll concentrate on the bony labyrinths first. The bony labyrinth around the vestibular system is the brown, right where my cursor is here. That's the, that's the tunnel dug in the bone. And look at my, follow my, my cursor as I'm tracing it here. Bony labyrinth, bony labyrinth, bone, bone, bone. And then you can see that these round things are called semicircular canals. They are at right angles to each other, much like the corner of a room is. If I look at the corner, the top corner over there, you can see the ceiling, the wall, and the other wall. They meet at 90 degrees. And that's really cool because they detect my head location in space. My head, unlike my elbow or knee, which is a hinge joint, my head can swivel on my neck any direction. This means that any way I move my head, fluid in one of those three, so I'm just putting my hands here to make a, a, a floor, a wall, and another wall, fluid in one or more of those canals is going to be activated. And if that happens, my brain is given information as to where my head is in space. They call those the meeting like that orthogonal, and that's in your notes. We'll look at that in your notes when we go to it. But just giving you a bit of a first heads up here. So now sharing screen again, we'll look at, the, at our PowerPoint slide. Now let's look at the cochlea, the bony labyrinth of the cochlea in beige. And then you can see now, so that's carved like a tunnel, like, like a snail shell. And in fact, cochlea is the Greek word for snail shell. When you're thinking about the size of a cochlea, this picture shows it fairly well. The cochlea is about the size of your eardrum. Okay, how big would the cochlea be? About the size of a, of a dime. About the size of the tip of your little finger. They're quite small. Now, the pink here is the membranous labyrinth of the balance or vestibular system. The orange is the membranous labyrinth of the cochlea. So what's the membranous labyrinth? Soft, squishy. Okay, it's like you dug a tunnel, and you follow the cursor here, you dug a tunnel in the bone, and that's the bony labyrinth, and then you snaked a series of rubber hoses inside the tunnels that you dug, okay? And the rubber hoses that you snaked through the, the bony labyrinth, those rubber hoses are the membranous labyrinth. So the bony labyrinth contains perilymph, right where I'm drawing my cursor, perilymph fluid, perilymph fluid, perilymph fluid, and same with the beige here, perilymph fluid, perilymph fluid. And then inside the orange area, that's endolymph fluid is inside of there. So let's look at another picture. Now these are sensory areas. What this means is this is where the hair cells are located. Hair cells in the cochlea are located all the way up the spiral. And notice the blackened area here. That's the membranous labyrinth. So the whole membranous labyrinth contains hair cells in the cochlea. Now look at the membranous labyrinths of the, of the vestibular system. They're different. So here, what, where my cursor is, what I'm drawing here, this is the pink here. Okay, so we're looking at just the pink areas. Looking at the pink areas, now shown in white here, the hair cell regions are only those areas highlighted in black. So notice here. This area of your vestibular system has hair cells here. This area has hair cells here. This, the hair cells in these semicircular canals, the hair cells are only located in the bulbs, the fat bulbs, okay? Over here, they're only located here, and here, and here, and here, the bulbs. And the hair cell area here is kind of here, and here. So we'll just kind of, we're looking at the gross anatomy thereof, okay? Go to our notes now. Vestibular system. We'll cover it first and get it out of the way. 
because you and I as HISs are not doing balance testing. We're not working with the sense of balance. If you were going to the University of Maryland where they have an AUD degree, okay, a doctor of audiology degree, or University or Southwest Missouri State University in Springfield, Missouri, okay, where they train audiologists, they train them to do vestibular testing as well as hearing testing. We don't. It's not part of our scope of practice. So we'll look at the vestibular system and highlight certain things that any good HIS should know, and then we'll leave it in the rearview mirror and we really won't deal with it much again. So let's cover it now and dispense with it in the next 15, 20 minutes. Here goes. Vestibular system, balance. Human balance system has three pieces to it. Okay, I'll stop sharing for a second so I can really emphasize it. Vision, your vestibular systems of your ears, and a word called proprioception, okay? Proprioception is inside every muscle in your body. You have extrafusal fibers and intrafusal fibers inside of your muscles. Don't freak about it, I'm never gonna ask you this, okay? But inside your muscle, if you took a bicep, or you took a finger muscle, or any, you took out a muscle, you'd see all these stripes, strains in it, like, like and one of those, gives information to your brain about where that limb is in space. So when a, do when a cop suspects you of drinking and driving, the cop may ask you to get out of your car and he or she's going to do the Romberg test. I'll show you the Romberg test. We're going to ask you to stand there like this, close your eyes and put your hand out to your side. Okay, sir, now with your eyes closed, touch your nose. Good, you pass. If you're drunk, you're missing, you can't do it. The Romberg test is a test of proprioception. Do you know where your limbs are in space without you looking? Okay, so when you think of the sense of balance, think of a three-legged stool. Okay, one leg is vision, the other leg is the vestibular system, the other leg is something called proprioception, knowledge of where your limbs are in space without you looking. Good. That's the sense of balance per se. Now let's look at the vestibular system itself. And when you look at the vestibular system itself, it too has three parts. <laughs> Okay, it has the utricle, the saccule, and the semicircular canals. The utricle and saccule. First, we'll discuss those little guys. Look at the utricle and saccule of the ear. Look at the PowerPoint slide here. Whoa, something happened to that power. There you go. Oh, something moved. Utricle. What I'm circling right here, utricle, saccule, those two little guys, okay, in this picture here, utricle, saccule. Remember, this picture here is only showing you the membranous labyrinth. This picture is showing you the pink areas, utricle, saccule, semicircular canals, the three pieces of the vestibular system. And note, the three semi, the semicircular canals, there's three of those. <laughs> so you got three and three and three. Sense of balance has three parts, vision, vestibular system, proprioception. The vestibular system itself has three parts, utricle, saccule, semicircular canals. And the semicircular canals, there's three of them. And they are at right angles to each other. What do the utricle and saccule do? They help you locate yourself linearly, like up and down, or to and fro. You ever gone in an elevator, and as the elevator goes up, your stomach kind of, and then the elevator stops? That's the utricle and the saccule. You ever been sitting in a car at a stoplight, and you're not sure if you're drifting forward, or is the car beside you going backwards? You get a little mixed up sometimes, okay? That's your utricle 
and saccule. The utricle and saccule help you detect linear acceleration, either left and right or up and down. One of them does one, one does the other. Between you and me and the doorpost, I don't even know. Doesn't matter, okay? But that's what they do. The semicircular canals are a little bit different. They help you tell when you've gone around a corner. Angular acceleration and location of your head in space. Location of your head in space. So now when we look at the hair cell regions of these guys, once again, please don't think hair cells exist all along your semicircular canals because they don't. They just exist in with these bulbs. And these bulbs at the bottom here are called ampullae. Now, inside the ampullae and inside the semicircular canals, I should say inside the utricle and saccule. First, let's look at the utricle and saccule. So you can see the little picture on your left, and you see the location of both of those little bags, okay? Inside of those little bags, inside those little membranous labyrinths, are hair cells. So now look at the right and you're going to see a bunch of hair cells. If you look closely, you'll see that some of the hair cells are shaped like test tubes, and some of them are shaped like pears. In other words, here's a test tube shape one. Here's a pear shape, pear shape, test tube shape, test tube shape, pear shape. The pear shapes are type 1. The test tubes are type 2. Type 1 is afferent. Type 2 is efferent. Type 1 sends sound in or, or balance info to your brain. And type 2 receives information regarding the balance from the brain. Now look at the hairs, look at the hairs on top of these hair cells. And you can see they're growing out in clumps. But what's even weirder is that the hairs are surrounded by gelatin, by a gelatinous mass, like jello. I hate jello. Never could eat jello. Can't stand the texture of it. It's like whale blubber with food coloring and sugar in it. Gag me with a spoon. Anyway, jello, okay? And what's on top of the jello? Little tiny stones called ear stones or otoliths, O-T-O-L-I-T-H, lith, stone. These are meant to give more weight or mass on top of the jello so that when things change, movement changes, the hair cells are, th th there's a bit of a lag of movement. Okay, that's what the stones do is they add a little bit of weight on top of the jello so that when you move or change direction, there's a lag in movement and the, and the hairs are more bent. If the stones fall off, you're going to have balance problems. And the most common balance problem you can have is called BPV. You ready to write this down? Here we go. Benign, B-I-N-I-G-N, benign. P, paroxysmal, P-A-R-O-X, Y-S-M-A-L, paroxysmal. And the V is for vertigo, V-E-R-T-I-G-O, benign paroxysmal vertigo. What is this in English? It's as common as the day is long. Lots of people talk about it. Oh, my ear stones fell off. I had to go to the doctor and they had to put my head in these positions to make the ear stones go back on where they're supposed to go. And what is BPV? Well, I bend down to tie my shoelaces and whoa, 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 whoa. hang on, I'm dizzy. Whoa. It's when you move in a certain direction. And it's like, oh, my God. And that is benign paroxysmal vertigo. It's not cancer. It's not going to kill you. It's not malignant. It's called a nuisance. That's why they call it benign. 
very common. It's why elderly people hate going to carnivals. It's why I hate going on spinny rides. We used to love them as a kid. Oh, yeah, I'll do it again. Let's go on there. Do it again, Dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm looking at those things and I'm going, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Your ear stones tend to fall off, and doctors can position your head in certain ways so that you can get the ear stones to go back on top of the jello where they belong. Okay, balance system. What's the most common test for balance? Well, get this. Remember we said earlier that balance is from vision, vestibular system, and proprioception? Well, when they do balance testing, they'll take an electrode and they'll put it right beside your eye, and right beside this eye, and then they're going to have you track lights. And the lights are moving, and they're, they're monitoring your eyes as they follow the light and then snap back to the middle. Follow the light, snap back to the middle. Then they'll make the light go the other way. Following, snap. Following, snap. Just like when you're at a railroad track in a car and you're counting the cars. You're going one, two, three. You're tracking. Okay, so that's called nystagmus, N-Y-S-T-A-G-M-U-S, -S, nystagmus. It means your eyes are tracking. Now, if you've ever been drunk or been at a party where someone's passed out and laying on the bed not feeling very well, if you opened up an eyelid, bet you dollars to donuts, you'd see the guy's eyes going, because he's desperately trying to find center. He's dizzy, okay? He's got nystagmus, drowsiness, the Greek word for drowsiness. Nystagmus means your eyes are tracking. They're moving. They'll have a slow phase and then snapping to the middle, or a slow phase and snapping to the middle. Another test that they will do is they'll put warm air or warm water seven degrees above your blood temperature into your ear canal. They call that irrigating. And it's going to really bug one of the semicircular canals. And that's going to make your eyes track. Your eyes are going to do this. They're inducing nystagmus on purpose. Then they'll take cold water or cold air, seven degrees below blood temperature, and they'll watch your eyes track in exactly the opposite direction. They're supposed to. If they don't, if they can't induce nystagmus, you have a vestibular problem. So tests of your vestibular system are called ENG, electro, electrodes, nystagmography electronystagmography, E-N-G. All right, look at all we've covered in balance. Let's look at our notes now. Let's share. Okay, so looking at your notes here, human balance system has three parts, vestibular system, vision, proprioception. Proprioception is knowledge of where your limbs are in space without looking. Google up the Romberg test for drinking and driving. Close your eyes, stretch out arm, now touch your nose. It's a test of proprioception. Vestibule is the entryway into the chambers of the inner ear. It's part of the bony labyrinth that contains the utricle and saccule. Let's look at a picture of it so you see it. So we're not just talking here. Here, vestibule. Right where I'm circling. Okay, contains the utricle and the saccule. All right. Vestibular system consists of utricle, saccule, and three semicircular canals. Utricle, leather bag. Saccule, little sac. Both are membranous labyrinths, so they contain endolymph. They're surrounded by the vestibule, which is the bony labyrinth that contains perilymph. They detect linear acceleration up and down. Maculate inside of these. Maculae. Okay, what the heck is that? The maculae is these areas. Macula. Macula. The hair cell regions of the utricle and saccule. Okay, maculae. The three semicircular canals form three orthogonal planes. Orthogonal means they meet at 90 degree angles. The semicircular canals terminate into the vestibule as a total of five enlarged bulbs called ampullae. 
And again, the three semicircular canals, not only do they meet at 90 degree angles, orthogonal in other words, but they, they all terminate into the vestibule. So here's a picture. They terminate into the vestibule as these bulbs, ampulla, ampulla, ampulla. Those are the hair cell regions of the semicircular canals. So this was a hair cell region of the macula of what the utricle and saccule. And this is showing a close up of those type one and type two hair cells. Notice one's pear shaped, the other one's test tube shaped. Notice the jello around the hairs and the otoliths lying on the top. Okay, so this is just a close up of this slide here. When we go further, now you can see again a color picture, macula of the utricle and saccule. And again, there's that close up that we saw earlier. And the otoliths provide a little bit more mass so that they, there's a bit of a lag in the movement. And inside your semicircular canals, we said that they end in those bulbs called ampulla. So here's an ampulla, here's the semicircular canals, and look at the hair cells in there. And this little mound is called a crista. Okay, C-R-I-S-T-A, crista, which means hill. And the hair cells on the hill are also surrounded by jello. Okay, crista, crista. What are these? And these are inside the ampulla. And the ampulla are the bulbs of the end of the semicircular canals. So inside of here, the hair cell regions would be here, here, here. There you go. Now, let's get to our notes and finish the vestibular system. Here we go. There's your ampulla business there. Inside each ampulla are things called cristae, ridges that contain type 1 and type 2 hair cells. They detect angular acceleration in your head position in space. Perception of turning. Turning. So, summary. Macula and cristae contain type 1 and type 2 hair cells. These correspond to outer and inner hair cells of the cochlea. That is, type 1 are afferent and type 2 are efferent. Damage to the vestibular system results in vertigo, nystagmus. Recall balance has the three parts to it. If one is damaged, the other two have to try and take over. That's why people with vestibular problems hate nighttime. Because at night, they're relying on their vision because the vestibular system has damage. So you've already lost one leg of the three-legged stool. And at nighttime, it's hard to see. So now you're impinging on a, the second leg of that proverbial stool. Okay? When we go to the top of page two, you will read here, benign paroxysmal vertigo. It's a very common vestibular disorder. Sudden vertigo when your head is in a certain specific position results from tiny ear stones that have fallen off. Hair cells no longer are giving correct messages about your head location in space. And there's that other acronym, electronystagmography, is a common test for vertigo problems. HIS does not do vestibular testing. It is within the audiologist's scope of practice. In fact, some few audiologists actually specialize in vestibular testing. There. Now, in this first 35 minutes, we've covered some ground, okay? We are done now with the vestibular system. But essentially, know the salient points that we've covered. Know what those two acronyms are. Know what ear stones are. Have, it, have some definitions thereof. The three and the three and the three, that kind of stuff. Okay, let us turn our attention now to the cochlea and bear down on this guy right here. Okay, let's go to pictures here. This is a picture show, highlighting the, the bony labyrinths of the inner ear. Vestibular system on the left, cochlea on the right, and remember all the white here is solid bone. All right, 
This next picture highlights the membranous labyrinths. This picture highlights the bony labyrinths. Now we're focusing on the utricle, saccule, the ampullae, and of course, the cochlea. And this is the eighth nerve going to the brain. And the eighth nerve has a vestibular branch and a cochlear branch. And it's got afferent and efferent fibers to it, communicating with the efferent and afferent fiber, uh, hair cells, etc., etc., etc. Now, notice how the, the hose, especially we're focusing on the cochlea now. We're leaving the vestibular system behind. Notice how this hose is drawn as if it's round. Okay? Here. Looks like a round hose. Well, let's get a little more definition. As you look more closely, you'll see it's actually more triangular. Look at how this area is triangular. It's got a straight back, and then it slopes kind of this way. So in all actuality, this is a simplistic drawing of this. Now let's bring you a little closer. Remember, this is the membranous labyrinth. The light gray is the bony labyrinth. Okay, so the darker gray with the stripes, membranous labyrinth. Look closer now, or not closer, but this is showing you further definition. See the triangular area here? Let's look inside of it. Or how does it, what, how is it arranged in there? Look what it does. Here it is. See that triangular area? That triangular area is this. And notice how it splits the bony labyrinth in half in the cochlea. Bony labyrinth, bony labyrinth, membranous labyrinth. And this continues all the way up the cochlea. And so the oval window that pushes in and out of the cochlea is in communicato with the top portion, scala vestibuli. Scala media, membranous labyrinth, and then the bottom one is scala tympani. So when the fluid is pushed in this area, fluid goes out in that area and bulges, like my cheek, the round window. When you push the oval window in, the round window bulges out. Okay? Similarly, if you pushed on the round window, the oval window would bulge out. But the point to notice here is that the scala media, or membranous labyrinth, shaped like a triangle, and yep, you could squeeze it, because it's membranous, it's filled with fluid like a balloon, okay? But it splits the bony labyrinth here from here. Let's look at, a, at another picture. Now, this is a picture, again, of just the membranous labyrinths. Notice how the membranous labyrinth of the cochlea sends fibers to the eighth nerve. All the vestibular system sends fibers to the eighth nerve. So there's a vestibular branches and cochlear branches of the eighth nerve, membranous labyrinths of all of the system. And here's an actual cross section of a cochlea. Here's a cross section. Remember, this whole thing is as big as a dime or as big as the tip of your little finger. But look closely at this, and I'll, I'll bring you through with my cursor, okay? Bony labyrinth, membranous labyrinth, bony labyrinth. Paralymph fluid, endolymph fluid, paralymph fluid. Oval window communicates with this. Round window communicates with this. And this continues all the way up the cochlea. Okay? This is called the base of the cochlea. This is called the apex of the cochlea. And there's something really cool to note here. Even though this is a cat's cochlea, Notice something about the, about the membranous labyrinth. It actually gets bigger as you go to the narrow apex of the cochlea. The, the membranous labyrinth is actually smallest at the wide base of the cochlea, and it's biggest toward the narrow apex of the cochlea, which is exactly backward to the way you think. Let's look here. This is an unrolled 
cochlea. So all we did was we took the snail-shaped coil and we unrolled it. And now you can see here the oval window communicating with this top bony labyrinth, which is called the scala vestibuli. Scala, scale simply means stairs in Latin, okay? Because you're going up the coil. And look at the bottom part of the bony labyrinth, scala tympani, and it's in communicato with the round window. And the promontory behind it is the scala media, which is the membranous labyrinth. And notice the direct opposite thing to what you'd think. The scala media is narrowest at the wide end of the cochlea, and it's widest at the narrow end of the cochlea. This should tell us something about mass and stiffness, as we covered in acoustics. The cochlea is what we call tonotopic, T-O-N-O, T-O-P-I-C, tonotopic. And in English, this means specific frequencies are represented in specific places. This area has less mass, and it's more stiff. So guess what? It resonates with high frequencies. This area, area has more mass and less stiffness, so it resonates with low frequencies. So low frequency hair cells are located at the narrow apex of the cochlea, and high frequency treble hair cells are located at the wide base of the cochlea. And here, don't take my word for it, look at this. This is another cross section. So this picture and this picture are similar. Okay, only mine I just made colorful. And I'm highlighting the fact that the whole cochlea is surrounded by bone, totally, utterly, and completely, petrous bone. And you've carved a series of tunnels in that bone called the bony labyrinth. And then the membranous labyrinth is the triangular shapes. And notice how it splits the bony labyrinths in half, all the way up the cochlea until you get to the very tippy top. But another thing to notice, notice how the membranous labyrinth is smallest here, gets wider here, and gets wider there. Okay, have a look here now. What's wrong with this picture? This is an actual picture from a hearing aid manufacturer. I tell you no lies, okay? But it's a nice picture in certain ways. Here's the foot plate of the stapes. This is the scale of vestibuli. And it pushes the fluid around and around and around. And then the fluid goes through the hole. And that little hole is called the helicotrema, H-E-L-I-C-O-T-R-E-M-A. Helicotrema, la, 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 la. Helicotrema, la, 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 la. Okay, you never forget the helicotrema. The helicotrema is the only communication between the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani. Because when fluid is pushed in the scala vestibuli, all around the length of the cochlea, look what happens at the top arrow. Down through the helicotrema, out scala tympani, out scala tympani, out scala tympani to bulge the round window. So this is a nice picture that shows you that interaction of play, all right? But the flaw in this picture is they're showing you the scale of media as being the same size all the way up, which is patently false. Same with this slide, a cross section, terrible picture in a way, because they're showing you the scale of media is biggest at the bottom, which is exactly back ass words to the truth. So, and believe it or not, these come from hearing aid manufacturers, these pictures. So you have to, there's just, I just am show, cautioning you that way. Now, what we want to do is we're going to do a little bit of gross anatomy here before we leave today's session. So what we're looking at is one of these coils. That's all we're doing. Boom. So now you can see on the top, scale of vestibuli. Okay, paralymph fluid, scala tympani, paralymph fluid again, bony labyrinth, bony labyrinth, membranous labyrinth, and inside the membranous labyrinth, endolymph fluid. Okay, and then you're going to see all these little parts here, 
and the parts. Look at this big fan-like shape. Spiral ligament on the far right. And then over here on the left, if you can see my cursor, you'll see two layers of bone. Spiral lamina. Lamina is the Latin word for layers. So you got two layers of bone there. It's like a bony shelf that sticks out. And what's held between them is the basilar membrane. Basilar membrane. The basilar, B-A-S-I-L-A-R, basilar membrane is the floor upon which the hair cells stand. And where are the hair cells? Right here, right where I'm circling. Those are the hair cells. Spiral ligament, spiral lamina, the basilar membrane is held tight between them. What's this top membrane here called? Reissner's membrane. It separates scala vestibuli from scala media. Reissner, R-E-I-S-S-N-E-R. -S -S -E basilar membrane separates scala media from scala tympani. Good. All width. Now look at this vein area, all vascular. That's called the stria vascularis. That's the oxygen and blood supply to the hair cells of the cochlea. Sca uh, stria vascularis. Here they call it area vascularis. Don't worry about it. And then this little bleb, this piece of fat, tectorial membrane. It sits on top of the hair cells. Basilar membrane on the bottom, tectorial on the top. And now you've got this set of eyes here. And that is the cell bodies of the eighth nerve fibers that leave the hair cells. The hair cells are here. The eighth nerve fibers are leaving, going toward the brain. And their cell bodies are here. And that's called your spiral ganglion. Think of a gang, a gang of thieves, okay? See if I can show, here you go. Here's your spiral ganglia, spiral ganglia, spiral ganglia. And remember, this is a cross section. So in reality, it's all the way around. They just took a cross section. So please don't think you have five spiral ganglia. They continue all the way around. So this little guy here just happens to be one. Right next to it would be another one. Right next to it would be another one as you're going up, 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 up the cochlea. Remember, though, this is just a cross section. Let's look at our notes and see where we are. Look right here. Cochlea, Greek for snail shell. It has two and a half turns. Chinchilla cochlea is often shown because in these animals, the cochlea actually extends into the middle ear space. So you can lop it off for easy excision. In the human and in other mammals, the cochlea is embedded into the petrous portion of the temporal bone. So you can't just get at it. In fact, I'll tell you, I've never held a human cochlea in my life. Think of the eye. When they do surgery on the back of your eye, they actually pop out your eyeball. It's laying on your cheek. They cut into it. They reattach the retina. And then they push the eyeball back into the socket. The eyeball is sitting right here. The cochlea, uh-uh. It's embedded in the bone. It's like saying to Michelangelo, David is inside the, the, that, that thing of marble. Okay, he's inside that, that, that slab of marble. It's, it's a hole dug in the bone, whereas in a chinchilla, the cochlea sticks up like this into the middle of your space. So what's surrounding it? Air. So they can cut it off and easily go inside. A human can't do that. A dog can't do it. Cat can't do it. You'd have to denude all the bone around the bony labyrinth without puncturing the bony labyrinth. So to actually handhold a cochlea is very rare indeed. And the cochlea does not lend itself for easy examination by the physician. You can hardly get in there. It's the house of the holy. You crack the otic capsule and you're deaf. The petrous bone is hard and brittle. 
So you can't just go into a cochlea and do surgery quick a sec. It's just like it's not accessible. So anyway, looking at our, at our notes now. Oh, you don't need to know the human cochleas, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? You just need to know it has two and a half turns. Basically the size of a pinky, fingertip. Human cochlea is remarkably inaccessible, buried inside the hardest bone of the body, like an auger twisted hole. Note the location of bony and membranous labyrinths. Note the fluids inside each labyrinth. Bony labyrinth contains paralymph, high in sodium, low in potassium. Membranous labyrinth is exactly the opposite. High in potassium, low in sodium. Hey, this is how batteries work. They have opposite chemical compositions, which creates a, an electrical charge. And that's what your cochlea is going to do. It's because nerves communicate by way of electricity. So they got that's the way they work. Ductus reunions is simply a communication of endolymph between the vestibular system and the cochlea. Remember, they share the same fluids. And then you'll see the scala. Bony labyrinth contains paralymph associate with the oval window, scala vestibuli, right here. Scala vestibuli, scala tympani, scala media. And the scala media is sometimes called the cochlear duct. It's the membranous labyrinth of the cochlea. It's filled with endolymph and it contains the organ of corti. <laughs> which is the hair cells. Organ of cordy is the end organ of hearing. And the helicotrema, the little opening at the apex of the cochlea, connects scala vestibuli to scala tympani. Otherwise, they are totally separate. <coughs> Excuse me. If I show you in my picture here, here's the helicotrema here. If, I, if you're looking at, <clears throat> I didn't show the helicotrema here, but it would be a little circle, a little hole. But over here, helicotrema. Un, you're just taking a, an unrolled cochlea, pushing in the oval window, moves fluid around and out. Okay, and that's what is shown here. Pushing the fluid here, and around, and around, and then down and out, out. Whoops, whoa, don't move that picture, Ted. And then out over here to hit the round window. Looking at this inaccurate picture, looking at our close-up now, here's the landmarks that we need to know for today. Reissner's membrane separates scala vestibuli from scala media. Basilar membrane separates scala tympani from scala media. Know your three spirals. Spiral lamina, I should say spiral ligament, Spiral lamina, spiral ganglia. Tectorial membrane sits on top of the hair cells. Basilar membrane sits underneath the hair cells. And what are all these guys here? Supporting cells. They just support. Let's look closer. There's a picture just a little closer up than this. Spiral uh, ligament. Spiral lamina, spiral ganglia. Look at those eyes. Do you have the feeling you're being watched? Tectorial membrane on top of the hair cells. Basilar membrane underneath the hair cells. Reissner's membrane separating vestibuli from media. Basilar membrane separating media from tympani. Stria vascularis, the blood supply. So there's your gross anatomy. Let's look at our thing here and finish today. Close up of a single turn of cochlea. There's all your pieces and parts. All of them laid out. We didn't discuss modiolus, but I can show you that. That's pretty easy. Modiolus is simply the bony core inside the cochlea. So if we look at modiolus, Here's modiolus, all this stuff. It's the bony core, the inside. Okay, that's all modiolus is. 
So when you really look in, so this was a, I'm bringing you a little bit closer here. Next week, we will look at this. And we're going to look closely at inner versus outer hair cells. We're going to look closely at what the fluid is here versus what kind of fluids in here. Because there's two different kinds there too. But it's really cool. Here's a picture showing you all the supporting cells without the hair cells. And this is showing you the hair cells without showing you so much the supporting cells. So these, this picture here and this picture here are meant to complement each other. Okay, all we've done, here's the hair cells, and here's the little areas that support the hair cells. Okay, and we're going to talk about these weird little golf tees here, what they're for, and this little golf tee here, what it's for, and what this, what's was in here, inner hair cell. Okay, what holds these guys together? Supporting cells of these outer hair cells. Tectorial membrane, supporting cells, hair cells, basilar membrane, tectorial membrane, and then of course, Reissner's membrane. I think that's probably pretty good enough for today. I don't know about you, but that's good. What we'll do next week, and I'll show you in our notes, we will work our way down on page three, there's your spiral ganglion described over here. And then you can see right where we're going in our PowerPoint, close up of scala media, close up, tectorial membrane, supporting cells. I will never ask you to, to remember these names. FNO for nerds only or freak not out, okay? Don't freak about that. If somebody asked me to point them all out, I'd have to look in a book. So I would never ask you, but I am going to go over next week very carefully cortilymph. We will look at that quite carefully, but enough on that. Let's call it a day here. I'll stop recording and we'll tune in next week and we will complete our anatomy of the human cochlea, unit five. Okay. Cool. Oh, thank you. You bet. Always good to at least have someone show up. <laughs> All right. Bye.